Shalom and welcome everyone to another episode of Keys of the Kingdom. I am your host, Tony Pino, and in today's episode, we will be looking at Romans 9. We left off kind of in the middle of it there, right around verse 18, last time together. Now, if you find that you like this video, want to know more about what I teach or know more about the Roman series, just hit that subscribe button on the right-hand side. That takes you to my YouTube channel. I've got many other videos on many other topics. You can hit the like button, leave a comment pass the video around. I'd greatly appreciate it. And also in the description box, there will be a link because we are on Spotify. So Keys of the Kingdom is on Spotify. Just hit that link in the description box. All right. So in Romans 9, last time when we left off, we were uh, seeing what I believe to be the birth of replacement theology starting to happen in the Roman assemblies there. And so there's this question on whether or not Israel really is Yahweh's elect. I mean, let's face it. Yeshua is seated at the right hand of the Father, and yet the leadership of Israel has still rejected Yeshua. They have pursued the followers of Yeshua, amen, and they want nothing to do with them, right? They will kill them. They think they are uh, heretics. They think that they are following a false Messiah and so forth. And so the believers in Yeshua, many of them are in the diaspora. The word has now gone out to the nations, and uh, what we are seeing is no uh, what we're going to see, I should say, is know that Yahweh has not rejected his people. But what you are seeing now is a judicial hardening of Israel. The leadership of Israel rejected Messiah Yeshua. And because of that, now the blessings is going out to the nations, but this will not be forever. So we're seeing this chain, this link of how Yahweh has elected his path for Messiah Yeshua to come. And just because you are one of the elect, or you have been part of the elect, which would be the nation of Israel, doesn't guarantee you a place in the world to come by your ethnicity. No, you have to have faith and trust in Yahweh, which means faith and trust in Yeshua. And so what is he doing now? Well, he's doing to Israel what he did to Pharaoh, right? Just as Moshe came to Pharaoh pleading with him Yahweh's will, Yahweh's desire, Pharaoh could have submitted, amen, and received mercy, and so forth, and let Yahweh's people go and everything and submitted to Yahweh, but he chose not to. And so when you resist Yahweh's calling on your life, he can choose to harden you. And that's what he did to Pharaoh. So it's not that anyone is born already guilty of sin, some type of sinner who can't do anything good and so forth. It's something you become, something you choose. And when Yahweh comes to you, you have the choice to accept him, repent and turn, or not, and he can choose to harden you if you resist. That's what he did with Pharaoh. That's what he's doing to Israel right now. Israel's leadership is being hardened. Remember, when Yeshua uh, came to the Perishim, the Pharisees, he said, you don't even believe in the words of Moshe, because if you believed in the words of Moshe, you would believe me because he spoke of me. But because you don't believe in the words of Moshe, neither will you believe my words. So was Israel following the laws of Moses correctly? No, they were not. Did they think they were? Absolutely. They thought they were super righteous, right? We even got people today that think that they were following the law correctly and that Yeshua rejected them. No, if they were following the law of Moshe correctly, they would have received Yeshua because the words of Yeshua, amen, I mean, the words of Moshe point you to Yeshua. Following the commands of Yahweh point you to Yeshua, you would receive him. But no, the leadership of Israel did not receive him. They rejected him. And as it even says in John chapter 7, verse 19, they didn't even follow the law of Moshe. And so that's another reason why they what rejected Messiah Yeshua. So now there's this judicial hardening that's happening to Israel. And that's where we're getting at, where Yahweh says, I will show mercy on whom I choose, and I will harden whom I choose. He can make uh, vessels of honor, vessels of dishonor is what we're going to see today. And this is showing an example of Pharaoh. And then now this is happening to Israel, right? But will this be forever? Will Yahweh cast his people off forever? No. He will not. We'll see this here in the later chapters. But let's go ahead and get back to Romans chapter 9. Um, I'm already doing uh, too much of an intro here, uh, but let's jump back into Romans 9. All 
All right, Romans 9, we left off right around verse 18, where Yahweh says, therefore, he has mercy on whom he wills, and whom he wills, he hardens. So there's this relation right now going on where you saw what happened to Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh, Yahweh endured with Pharaoh for a season, and he kept hardening him, but Pharaoh already had a hardened heart. He already was rejecting Yahweh. And so when you do that, again, there's a warning, Yahweh can harden you. If you want to resist repenting and turning to Yeshua, at any time, Yahweh can choose to harden you, right? He is the judge. And so I I implore you to please bow your knee to Yeshua. Amen. He is the true and only way to salvation. Now, in verse 19, you will say then, why does he still find fault for who has resisted his will? Okay. So Yahweh for a season is going to endure uh, with people, right, who are rejecting him, rejecting him, and then he's going to harden them some more. So they're asking, why does he still find fault? I mean, you now, Yahweh, have re, have re, uh, have hardened them. I mean, who can resist his will? Once Yahweh has judicially hardened you, made the rendering that you now are going to uh, be hardened, who can resist that will, right? But indeed, oh man, who are you to reply back? Like, you know, against God. Will the thing formed say to him who formed it, why have you made me like this? Well, first of all, you started out that way. You started out rejecting Yahweh. Then he turns around and hardens you. You weren't hardened from birth, and then he just hardened you some more. No, he wouldn't need to harden you anymore. If you were already this uh, evil sinner from birth, guilty of sin, and you were, uh, uh, you know, had no means of even loving Yahweh or anything because you are born guilty of Adam's sin and so forth, there is no need to harden you anymore. You're already hardened. You already can't receive uh, Yahweh, right? But no, he is hardening you because that's the path you chose. Everyone is born innocent and sinless, and you chose to reject the call to repentance. Israel, that leadership, chose to reject Yeshua. Amen. So now he is hardening them. So you can't say, hey, who are you to do this to me? Right? No, not at all. So verse 21, does not the potter have power over the clay for the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? Okay. Can he choose now to make Israel a vessel of dishonor? Well, they first disobeyed. They first chose to reject Yeshua. And again, we're talking about the leadership. We're not talking about every single Israelite. But in general now, just like what happened to Pharaoh, is happening now to the nation of Israel, right? For this generation. What if God, verse 22, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessel of wrath, prepared for destruction? That would be what? this generation of Israel, this generation of leadership here, okay? He is what enduring and long-suffering this vessel of wrath now uh, that is prepared for destruction. Israel is going to, what, lose the temple here. The Romans are going to defeat them. And so Paul is addressing this in Romans, saying, hey, I get it. We are seeing Israel not receiving Yeshua, amen? But later on, he's going to get to, does this mean he's cast her off permanently? Has he, has he gotten rid of her permanently? And of course, it's going to be no. But they are, the Gentiles here need to understand the process. When you reject Yahweh, he will use you for whatever means he want, wants to. He has the right to do so. He is sovereign over all the world, right? He is the final judge. And so it says here, that in verse 23, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. All right, the vessels of mercy right now are the Gentiles. The Gentiles are receiving mercy, okay, and uh, which he has prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So it does include the remnant of Israelites that are coming to Messiah Yeshua, he will ch choose those for mercy because they've repented in turn. But also he is choosing the Gentiles, right? What was the big deal in the first century? Well, as a Gentile, you were just considered a sinner. 
you were just considered a reprobate. You were, you know, unless you became a Jew, you had to follow the man-made process of becoming a Jew in order to be saved. But see, that is all being destroyed because it's not found in the Hebrew scriptures. Whether you were an Israelite or a Gentile, you came into the kingdom. You came in uh, by faith. Amen. If you were born an Israelite, if you did not walk in faith, you would be cut off. You would be cast out. If a Gentile wanted to come in by faith, it was not demanded circumcision. Nowhere in the Hebrew scriptures does it demand circumcision for you to be accepted into the kingdom of Israel. Okay. And so, no, this was a man-made tradition back then to convert Gentiles to becoming Jews. That is false. Okay. So it's all by faith coming in by faith and by grace and by mercy, amen, to take on the laws of the kingdom. Now we need to obey the laws, but to come in and be accepted, you are to be accepted by faith, amen, and by trusting in Yahweh. So verse 25, as he says also in Hosea, I will call them my people who were not my people and who and her beloved whom was not beloved. This is speaking of the Gentiles that are coming in now, those that are in Rome, here, those Gentiles, they are now called what? Yahweh's people. They are being grafted in just like at Sinai. The Gentiles there that were right with the Israelites were accepted by faith and by grace. They were they became part of the covenant, not by circumcision, but by faith. Okay. They didn't have to convert to becoming a Jew. They remained Gentiles while they were walking in the desert with Israel, but they became part of God's people by faith. Right, That's what's happening here in the first century. In uh, verse 26, and it shall come to pass in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they shall be called sons of the living God. All right, so again, it's all by faith. Whether you're an Israelite, whether you're a Gentile, everyone coming in comes by faith. And were the Gentiles considered Yahweh's people? No, that's the whole thing is the uh, leadership of Israel built up all these walls of division, this heavy weight, this heavy burden, not only on their own people, but on the Gentiles coming in. And so they were forcing circumcision. You had to become a Jew in their eyes. They created a man-made system. And so this is being rejected by Yahweh. Verse 27, Isaiah also cries out concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, the remnant will be saved. So not only is Gentiles coming in, but there's a remnant of Israelites that are going to be saved, right? Verse 28, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because the Lord will make a short work upon the earth. As Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of Sabaoth, which is the Lord of hosts here, had left us a seed we would have become like Sodom and we would have become like Gomorrah. Yeshua is the seed of Abraham. He is the um, son of David and so forth. And so all of Israel, without Messiah Yeshua, all of Israel would have been destroyed. But because of the promises made to Abraham by Yahweh, uh, then they're going to be fulfilled through the work of Yeshua. Israel will not utterly ever be cast off. Okay, she is being judicially hardened right now, but not utterly cast off. There is a remnant of believers of Yeshua within Israel. So, again, he's trying to tell the assemblies there do not think that Israel has been cast off. Yes, judicially hardening is happening. Yes, you're seeing uh, some things, but this is all for the glory of Yahweh. Amen. And so that you can come in, basically, so the Gentiles can come in. But no, he is not utterly destroying Israel, right? Verse 30, what shall we say then, that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained to righteousness even the righteousness of faith? But Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. All right, so this entire passage here is not about trying to earn your salvation through the law of Moshe, okay? It is because of their, what? Their conversion process. 
they put so much of their stock on physical circumcision to save you. They created this conversion process, and that's why we have the term works of law. Remember, the definite article the is not there. It's just works of law. And so when you see this term law here, excuse me, it's not speaking of the law of Moshe. It's speaking of the conversion process, right? This man-made tradition. So what shall we say then that Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith? Okay. They came in by faith. They didn't pursue coming to be, you know, coming in to become a Jew to be saved. No, they did the righteousness of faith, meaning putting their trust in Yeshua, right? But Israel pursuing the law of righteousness, okay? What's the law of righteousness in the first century here? What was the central focus? Circumcision. Is circumcision a law of righteousness? It is, but it's not what saves you. It's the sign of the covenant right? So, but Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not obtained to the law of righteousness, okay? This is a play on words. They pursued the law of righteousness, meaning salvation because of ethnicity, salvation because of circumcision, and they did not obtain the law of righteousness, which is what? The law of righteousness in Yeshua, putting your faith and trust in him for salvation, why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but as it were, by works of the law. They did not seek Yeshua by putting their faith and trust in Yahweh. They sought it by their ethnicity. We are saved by our ethnicity, circumcision. We are Jews. And so we're going to make people who come into the covenant become Jews because that's how you become saved. That's how be you become a covenant member is through this man-made process of becoming saved through our definition. And the sign of that is circumcision. Circumcision is a work of salvation to them. So no, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone because they were so prideful in their ethnicity, so prideful in trying to convert everyone to becoming Jews, they missed Messiah. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. And whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. That is Messiah Yeshua. You put your faith and trust in Yeshua. That's how you enter the kingdom. Amen. And then you come into that covenant relationship with Yeshua. So then you follow the law of Moshe, but you don't be, you're not bound to the man-made traditions, the man-made doctrines of that day, because they were the stumbling block, the man-made doctrines of that day, converting to becoming a Jew, that conversion process was a stumbling block. They missed Messiah because of that, because they were so prideful in their ethnicity. So this entire chapter in uh, uh, Romans chapter 9 is letting you know where Israel failed, where the nation, the, the leadership has failed, and they've missed Messiah, okay? This is allowing the Gentiles to come in, but there still is a remnant, right? There still is a remnant. So this is a very deep chapter, and it's dealing with the idea of has Israel been cast off permanently? No, there is a judicial hardening coming to Israel, but we're going to find later in chapters 10 and 11, Israel has not been permanently cast off. But God can choose to use Israel as a vessel of dishonor in this time period here, just like he did with Pharaoh, because of their free will choice to reject Messiah Yeshua, just like Pharaoh rejected the words of Moshe. It's, it's a nice, beautiful parallel going on. But this is speaking of the nation of Israel. This is not individual salvation, as many Western Christians try to make this chapter out to be. Okay, So I hope this was clear. Go over it again. Study to show yourself approved, everyone. And again, if you like this video, want to know more about what I teach, just hit that subscribe button on the right-hand side. And also, you can find me on Spotify. Amen. So blessings, everyone, in Yeshua. This is the time of Sukkot right now. So Hag Sukkot Sameach, everyone, and keep your eyes on Yeshua. Amen. He is the only way to salvation. Blessings.